Hello everyone, this is Michelle Kaler. I'm here um, doing my book launch today. Welcome everyone, thank you for coming. Um, the first thing I would like to do is something really fun that I learned off of YouTube. Gotta love YouTube. I'm going to give credit to YouTube for sure, especially on this one. Um, I actually learned this from um, the artist uh, Peta Hewitt. And I thought I'd share it on here um, as a background tool that you can use in the background of any of your colorings that have a little bit more um, space in the background um, or that actually have wood paneling already drawn in the background. So I'm going to show how you can color it and how you can draw it into your backgrounds. Okay, so this is what, this is one of the um, pictures that I have in um, my new book, My Mind's Kitchen. Um, the reason for that title was because um, I come up with random ideas and I thought, you know what, why don't I just put all those random ideas into one book? So that's what I did. So basically I was in my kitchen drawing them and I said to myself, well, my mind is like my kitchen. It's a stew of ideas. So anyway, um, back to this. Okay, so this is the wood paneling. Okay, and it's been colored. And I want to show how to color it. Uh, Peter Hewitt did it with uh, colored pencils and um, pastels. And I want to show you how to do it with eyeshadow. So um, anybody who knows me, I really like coloring with um, other mediums than the normal mediums and eyeshadow is one of those mediums. So let's put the bunnies to the side here and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you first draw your wood paneling. This was before I added the bunnies to the center. I drew the wood paneling first and then I added the bunnies. Okay, see that? Okay. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna show how you would actually color this page. And this is one of the pages I'm gonna give out free so everybody can print it and follow along with this video. And um, hopefully that uh, helps you out a little bit with this technique. Okay, all right. So first of all, what I like to use are the cheapest eyeshadows you can possibly get. Um, this one is from LA Colors, and I got this from the dollar store for a dollar, and this one is called Traditional. Hope everybody can see this. Okay. And the other one I really like to use is also LA Colors, but it is called Trendy. Okay. All right. Now, First of all, you're going to look at your wood paneling and think to yourself, okay, in wood paneling, nothing, the, the grains are always different. You're going to follow the grains, but the grains always have some type of different coloring in them, you know, darker, lighter. So it's really hard to mess up on something like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick an area to start, and I'm going to start from the top right here. And I'm going to go with one of the darkest colors I have, which is in darkest brown in the traditional um, eyeshadow palette. And I'm going to go with the one way at the bottom at the end. I'm going to take a cotton ball just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to work that in to the picture following the greens. So this one has a swoop green, so I'm just going to follow that, just like that, okay? Then get a little bit more on my cotton ball, and I'm going to follow the top green, just like that, okay? And go all the way to the end and just keep following the greens, okay? And this is a really fun technique to use, like especially in the autumn and in the fall when you're coloring 
different uh, woodsy animals and all the scenery for fall. It's a really fun thing to do. Okay, so see how it's coming alive just by following the greens in that dark color. Now, by all means, if you want to use pastels, by all means do that. But if you don't have a way of getting pastels, or if you just want to try something different, use eyeshadow. Okay. So see how that just came alive just by following those greens? Just like that. And then I'm going to go down to the next part here. And I'm going to follow the bottom here. And I'm going to go up. And I'm going to go across. Just like that. Okay. Don't mind my mom in the background. She's telling her dog to go potty outside. <laughs> so. Okay. Now here we go going around and you're just going to follow those lines which I've been calling greens even the little tiny ones if you want to get in there with a q-tip and do it that way that's fine too but I just like a little bit more of the messy look because it looks a little bit more natural I don't know of any wood that's all perfect so and just go across here like so See that? Just like so. And on that other video I watched on YouTube that I was talking about that Peta Hewitt did, she actually used color pencils first and then she laid down her pastels. But I think this works just fine, just using the eyeshadow. I think it gives it a really good, good look, woodsy look. And if you want, at the end, you can spray it with some like aerosol um, hairspray or um, some fix it fixative um, to keep it from coming off the paper or just put it in a plastic sleeve. That's what I do. I really don't have much fallout with this eyeshadow. It's pretty good on paper. And I'm just using like regular cardstock that I copied my picture onto from the book. Okay. And if you do um, keep the picture inside the book, just put a blank piece of paper over the top of it so it doesn't go on your adjacent uh, page. Okay. So, see how it's coming alive just like that, right? Okay. So, now that we've got that one side done, I'm going to show you now. Get a clean cotton ball. And then you're going to go in with a darker color, which I use on the other palette. It's almost, well, it's pretty much black. It's like a charcoal black. I'm going to go with that one on the palette called Trendy. Get your cotton ball in there. Okay. And don't be afraid of it because it's so dark. Just go over what you just did. It's all about layers on this guy. It's really, really light with this one though. Don't like push, you don't have to push down too hard with this one. Okay. Kind of like your, um, your color pencils. Um, you know, you're going to get whatever result with uh, how hard you push down on that pencil. So you get a little bit more of the black. Well, it's charcoal gray, I should call it, because it's not really that dark black. Okay, so go down and through those little nicks and crannies, grooves. Here we go. Really not the best with videos, but I try. I'll just say it's not my strong suit, but I like doing this. And for my book launch, I wanted to do something fun. I'm really excited about that book. Okay, so that's so far, okay? And that's the bottom part. See how that's coming alive just like that? Looking like wood. 
Okay, now, see like I was telling you earlier, it's like layer after layer after layer. Now you're going to take a clean cotton ball and you're going to take a medium color, which I usually use this one right here from, of course all of these were on one palette, but they're not off the traditional one. It's more like a, I'd say it's more like a rusty brown. See, it's more like a rusty color. Looks like wood, right? Wood paneling, here we go. Okay, so now you wanna keep that those little bits of white areas there because it just gives it a little bit of contrast. So with this color, again, we're gonna go and do the same thing again. We're gonna go over layer after layer after layer. You want that rust color in there. A little bit of that. Go around that again. And let's say you mess up. You can always just take an eraser and you can erase some of this in areas. I don't know about other um, eyeshadow brands, but this one you can actually erase pretty good. So, okay. So I'm going in these little areas here with that rust color. And I'd really like to see how yours all turn out. So if you download this one or screenshot it or whatever you do to print it, print her out and try it out. And you know what? If you want to use different colors, I mean, we all know wood is brown, but if you want to do a wood paneling, let's say that um, was painted. You could use different colors. You just have to do the technique that I showed you. You know, you use the medium color, then you use the darkest color, and then you used a um, almost uh, the middle color at the end. Okay, so that's your wood paneling right there. See that? Yes, I just grabbed the camera. Hopefully I can put it back in the right spot again. Okay. So that is how you do that. And it's really fun. Now these little knots here, you um, go over with your black pencil in a circle and then just blend it out with, um, you can use your, um, your Prismacolor a clear blender pencil um, or whatnot. Here, I'm gonna pause it real quick and I'm gonna go grab a, a black pencil. Okay, so now that I have a black pencil, I just have the rest of the regular uh, Prismacolor black pencil. You can go in and take that circle and just color around it and color inside it like so. And like so. And then you can even go over um, the grooves with your black pencil again, just to give it a little bit more dimension. Okay. And you can use, also use a dark brown color, depending on how much of an effect you want from the picture here. Okay. Now, now that you've gotten that established, you can take your white pencil, and this one is just my um, uh, five, my uh, polychromes. Uh, this one is just the plain white one. And it must be on like a like I have something underneath there. Okay, so then you're just gonna go in a circle with that. And anybody who's used white pencils to blend understands what to do. That you're just gonna soften it up so it actually looks like a knot. And it's okay to go over that eyeshadow with the white. It's pretty workable. Okay.
I missed that spot right there. And while you're at it, like if you see you're in my picture right now and you're doing my picture here and you say, oh my gosh, you know what? This would look really cool. Add some more little, like little veins. Because wood is just, you know, it's got all kinds of little dimensions to it. You can add some more veins to it. I always add to my colorings when I'm doing it. It's like, wait, I could do this. That's what's fun about it. Make it your own. Like I said, if you want to use different colors, pretend the wood has been colored or painted, you can do that. And what I just did here is I'm just, you know, reinforcing that line here with the black. You can also use dark brown, depending on what browns you're using in the wood. Like I use some pretty dark ones, dark browns, so I can get away with using the black there. See? See how that wood's just like coming alive there on the page? And I'm going through here and up through there. Okay. All right. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. I'm super excited about this new book. Please let me know what you think about it. Give me some thumbs up or I need to make some changes. I'm all about feedback makes people grow. So let me know what you think. I hope everybody likes it. Worked really hard on it. That's for sure. Okay. Now, see how that's coming alive? Like when you put that, that, that darker color in there, just brings it out. You can even add like little V's up here. There's a little notch there and a little bit more of a V there. A little bit more of a V here. Just reinforce it with a little bit more detail. Why not, right? Okay, now I think we've established how we color it. You would do this, this guy here, which is called the eye of the, of the wood. You do the same thing with that, you go over it with the black and then you blend it out and let's say at the end you say gosh you know what after I'm done with that black I sure do want to put some more brown in there you can definitely go over that black pencil again if you'd like um, just use a medium color if you want to blend it out you can back over those little notches that you just did in black go right over it again and there's my pup, Roxy. She's got to be in the video, of course. <laughs> Gotta love her fur babies. Okay, so Roxy's a boxer. I don't know how many of you guys have boxers out there, but they're wonderful. I just got a baby kitty in. They've already become best friends. So yeah, here's your, here's your finished look there. It looks pretty neat. And you can still blend it out more if you want. Um, and you can also use the color pencils like she did in the beginning with the brown pencils. And then um, and then put the eyeshadow on top if you'd like. Now, I'm going to show you how to actually put or make the wood paneling of a background. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to get the picture I'm going to use. Okay, I'm back. Now this one that we're going to put the wood paneling in the background is... Our little story time bunny. He's got really cute little balloons and a little book that says love, hope, color, and dream. And he's really cute. Not sure why my printer knocked off part of that balloon, but we're gonna draw that balloon back in because that's gonna bug me. So let's just do that. Okay. All right, so. In the background, we're going to put that wood paneling. Since he does have a lot of black blank space in the back, we can do that. So first of all, we're going to I'm going to start in this corner here and work down. Um, you're going to take a sharp black pencil, okay, and you're going to make your wood paneling. And this does not have to be completely straight. Make little V's. 
the little like grooves and dents and dings in the in the wood. So a straight line with little rivets. Okay. And then in the middle, wherever you want to end it, you're going to do a little crease there. You're going to go down and you can do a little dip again and then down again. Okay. So that's going to be the start of the wood paneling in the background. Okay. Now you're going to have the little rivets that hold the wood together or nails. And you can make these as big as you want. They don't have to be exactly the same. They can be um, odd shaped. The wood panel, I would say the wood paneling has been there for a long time. So, um, and then when the rivet gets in there or nail, it's going to split the wood a little bit. So you're going to go off these little veins off from there. Okay. And this side, almost like a spider. Cause once you hit that in there, that nail in there kind of crack the wood. So you can make one that comes out this way, one that comes out this way, and you can make them go as far as you want. If you want to make it go all the way to the end of the page, so be it. Okay. But I like to just make them a little, just a little bit and then down and then this one's going to go across and out, maybe out like that. Okay. So that's my little, my little rivets. Okay. Now, like in the other one, I put an eye. Um, now you're not going to put an eye in every single panel cause that just looks weird. Um, here and there put an eye. Now this, the, in the other one that we did, which was, which I did, um, I put it at the top, at the bottom of that panel. This one I'm going to put at the top right up here. Okay. And you're just going to make like a, a messy oval. Okay. And it's going to come out like that. Okay. Just around and up like that. Okay. And then you're going to put some little tiny rings in it. Yeah, we always see those little knots in the wood when we cut it. And you're just going to put a few little rings in there, as many as you'd like. You can even go as to one, little tiny, one more little tiny one in the back there. Okay, so that's your knot right there. And then we're going to make some more little creases coming from these little marks here. And let's say we'll go a little bit further up this way. We'll go into that. And maybe one that comes out further this way. And maybe one that comes out from that. Just like that. I mean, wood is just... You know, it's got a mind of its own, so I'm going to make this one come in and come, maybe come back out like this. Okay. So just put your own little swing to it. There we go. That's a good way of putting it. Okay. You know, so that's, that's that wood paneling there. Is that one little side there? And that's how easy it is, guys. And you can do that for any picture that has a lot of a background. And you just can work yourself... All the way down do, 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 do. and on the other side you could do the same thing all the way down and just keep going and like this next one I probably wouldn't put um, one of these knots I probably wait till the next one or if you wanted to you could do like what I did on this one I joined them I joined the knot there and on this side I just made one little tiny one on this side and then at the bottom I actually put a knot in the center it looks like an eyeball and you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do that. Let's see. So this next one we, we can put like right here. And we'll do a little knot there in the center. And through there. Okay. Just like that. And then like I did the knot in the center. You just have to, just like an eyeball. Just a little loop like that. And then you can come down just like this come back up and out okay 
and that's how simple that is just like that and then you're gonna make little like this little eyeballs inside okay just like that maybe not make that less straight and come up like this less straight okay and that's going to be the inside of that panel and then you can go off of that and make your little veins out like that maybe this way you can have some lines coming from the top connecting with that one maybe they go to the side there just make sure that your lines are not completely straight okay and then you come back through here and down and then you're gonna come down like that okay so that's how that one would be done so you got your top and see how it's coming along and then I'm going to show you here how you would color it first with color pencil I'm going to take my um, Prismacolor this one is called Sienna Brown really pretty brown and you just lightly shade over the whole entire thing. No rhyme or reason to it. Just keep going like so all the way down. See that? And you're just going to go over the whole entire thing. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Because you're going to put eyeshadow over the top of it anyway. But yeah, this is how you would do it if you're using the pencil and then the eyeshadow. Depending on how much of an effect you want from the eyeshadow. This just makes it a little bit richer. And then you can go over everything that you did in black with the dark brown. This is actually called dark brown in the Prisma. And you can go over everything that you did in the black with that just to make it a little bit more intense. Okay, just like that. And see how it just brings it out a little bit more. Okay. Then you would go over it with your um, your eyeshadow like we did before. And we take the darker one, dark brown like we did before. We go over all the different loops and rivets like we did before through up around that corner. See that? Try to get into those little and what I do is I pick I pick it up. I don't drag it. I just like kind of flick it. See? Kind of do that. Flick it so that you still have some of that white in there. You're going to drag it along all those lines. See that? Okay. You're going to keep going around and you're going to come down. And you're going to go through that. And around there and around the circle here. You're going to make sure you get all of your lines okay see how it's coming alive there and, and you know what it really doesn't look any different than when I didn't use the pencil over the top but I mean it's up to you that's why I did it without the pencil and that's why I'm doing it with the pencil plus I drew that on there versus this is from the copy machine this is a copied picture of mine from my book and that I just drew with the actual pencil so if you wanted to you could go over this one with black pencil first outlining it and then put the eyeshadow on if you want that same effect there if you're not like freshly drawing it on if that makes any sense okay so hopefully this helped and you guys can put this in some of your backgrounds it kind of makes a, a nice change and when you're like 
what do I do to this background? Which happens to me a lot. Um, use eyeshadow. Like, um, I've used um, stencils in the past um, with my eyeshadows in the background. And that is just, like, so super easy, guys. You just put... Okay, I want to use this little coin I've got right here just to show you real quick. My little angel coin that I gave my husband. It keeps him safe. Um, so, like, you can just put that down any shape you want, stencil or whatnot. And you can take any color you want from your eyeshadow that you want in your background and just go over that like this. See that? I'm using like a pink color. That's in this palette. Just going around it. And I'm just dabbing it. See, I'm just dabbing it. I'm coming back up. Dab, 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 dab. All the way around it like that. And if you want like a sunburst effect, come out further from it. Like drag it a little bit down and out like that. A little bit darker out. See that? Out, uh, out like that with your eyeshadow. Okay. See that? Okay. Then you remove your stencil there and you get a complete circle. And you can do that all over the page in different areas. And you can actually turn this into a bubble if you want. And I'm going to do a a separate video on how to do bubbles. Probably do that one tomorrow. And how to use bubbles. But yeah, you could turn that into a bubble. You can turn it into a sun. You can turn it into whatever you want. You can leave it that way. You can use stars. I use stars on my um, last picture I posted with the eagle. And that was really fun. So yeah, stencils, guys. Stencils, you can make your own. Even if you want clouds in the background, make a stencil background, a stencil cloud, put it in the background, take some eyeshadow to it with the blues, different blues, just keep layering over the top of the stencil and pick it up and it's so beautiful. Okay, well, hopefully that helped you out a little bit, guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of my launch. It is for three days, June 3rd through the 6th. Um, I will be offering um, a discount on my book for those three days and... Um, it's going to be down quite a bit um, from the $8.98 usual price. So this is the time to grab it if you'd like to get it. I would really appreciate it. And I'd love to see any of your work um, that comes from any of my books. And I appreciate it. Um, please uh, let me know if you like this video or not, if it helped. And all right. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.